Hi, everybody. This is Drag Into Turbo Lasers, Episode 4, uh, Between the Bolter and Me podcast. My name's Eric Wire, and tonight I'm joined with my two brothers, Adam Wire. Hey, everyone. And Greg Wire. Hey, everybody. I'm finally back, not watching X-Files this time. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's over, finally over. It yeah. was pretty good while it lasted. I feel that the ending episode wasn't particularly good, and that was probably because Chris Carter wrote it. <laughs> that, I guess, is a topic for another time. Probably not this podcast. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess um, this I guess episode might be a little bit different from some of the others in that the vast majority of it, I think we're just going to talk about the new Games Workshop release, which I think probably most of you are at least vaguely excited about, which is um, their new Death Watch board game, Death Watch Overkill. And there are lots of models in there that I think we can talk about. And then we'll, we'll probably talk a little bit at the, towards the latter half of the episode about a few other things. But yeah, I think we're going to spend most of this talking about, yeah, Death Watch. So um, lots to talk about. Yeah, and I think, to be honest, with why this release resonates with me is just the fact that the Gene Sealer cultists are back. Like, that's a part, when we started way back in the second edition, that was one of the cool, like, sort of weird elements of 40K and the hobby that was neat. It allowed people to play as, like, kind of an Imperial Guard list, but have these gene stealer cults and it was just a different sort of thing and then it just sort of fell by the wayside and hasn't been a thing since i guess second edition yeah i i don't think it has been i mean and i i think around the time people probably converted armies of it but since games workshop kind of stopped supporting them i feel people stopped doing it and only people who had been in the hobby for a while, remembered the stuff. Like, I feel like probably a lot of the people who started more recently probably don't really know anything about it. And that's a shame because I feel like they're, they're particularly interesting. I mean, I think most people who played the game know about the Gene Stealers, mm-hmm. but being that they're in Space Hulk and whatnot. But I don't know. I think it's a pretty neat concept that, like, a pure strange Gene Stealer can inject. I think it's like some sort of organism into a host and then that ends up starting this gene stealer cult the reprogramming yeah. of yeah the mutating the people and then such that they can slowly over various generations become more and more or less i don't know mutated looking and easier to infiltrate other um places yeah. and spread the i don't know disease or whatever you you'd call it i think one thing that i'm particularly surprised with i remember when i first heard rumors about the game that they were going to have gene stealer cult stuff i was worried that the majority of the gene stealer stuff would largely just be the normal gene stealers but surprisingly it looks like the game only has two of them and then like a whole slew of other models from um the more normal, like, cultist models all the way up to, like, several different character models. Yeah, so, I, I guess we're, the blog's primarily all about models and such. We might as well just start going through some of them and talking about sort of our thoughts on them. And, uh, like, there are a whole bunch of Space Marines 11, which we can get into that, but I feel the coolest thing and what's different or neat about the box is that there are these, this new cult or, well, new for newer players, I guess. Let's talk about them. Um, so the Patriarch basically looks like another, the old Broodlord model, although his cranium's a little bit bigger. It's kind of neat that his one claw arm is up touching his head. I, he has that the tongue sticking out with the mouth, which mm-hmm. presumably that's to inject whatever it is to take over people so he's pretty neat i kind of like the old imagery of the gene stealer patriarch it was much more bulky and 
fatter, venerable looking creature. Which I kind of thought that was sort of a funny, interesting looking. I sort of would have liked to see that, but I guess I can understand the the design choice to make him look just cooler and more. There was an old picture and maybe this is one of the second edition books of that fatter patriarch like Lee maybe using some psychic power to kind of take over the mind of a space brain or something. It was a neat picture. Maybe we can find it. Yeah, it's like almost like he's drawing, like making him just into a husk of a person, like shriveling in the skin or whatever. Very kind of evocative, interesting image that this model doesn't really convey that at all, but it's, it's still nice looking. But I, to be honest, I feel it's well, still nice. I feel it's one of the weaker models. Just and that's not, not coming in for a hug like the old brood lord. <laughs> that's true. But like, if he would be doing that, he then jam his tail into you. That's true. You're rough. It's true. It's like a big wasp. Mm-hmm. And then maybe that's how he spreads the infection. Yeah, not the tongue. Well, so the. Magnus, I think, is one of, at least for me, one of the more memorable designs from, like, the old Gene Steeler cultist pictures and stuff. He kind of looks like a magister, magician sort of guy. I think he looks his great. model turned out really well. Yeah. Like, he's nice, sort of long robes that look very regal and dignified, but then he has kind of a good sort of, like, preaching tight pose um he's yelling like all warhammer models it's true (laughs) which is good but like yeah he's just like he has a lot of sort of detail on him but not in a gaudy way in which they're like i don't what do we want to do with this model but like he has a ring that doesn't have a gigantic gem on it he actually has a side arm like his pistol in the back this also looks pretty nice he has a pretty neat little short sword type thing. Just nice. He looks really nice. I feel he'll, be, he'll be great for conversions. People use cool. him a lot, I think. Well, so the next the next model is I forget what he's called, but he's kind of like the head of the military arm of the Gene Stealer cultists. He has like this needle pistol and a bone sword. I particularly like the cord coming out of his nose. A lot of the old artwork kind of featured that, and I'm glad that that was incorporated here. He even has his, like, talking about his needle pistol, he has a holster there that is actually for the needle pistol. It's like it's actually empty, which I think is a nice touch. And has the hole on the bottom such that the long pointy end of it would go out. So, I mean, it all makes sense. Except the scope. Ah, uh, that's true. It yeah, probably wouldn't fit in there with that. Yeah. But you could easily remove that. But yeah, it, it's cool. And like, I feel he sort of has like the coat, trench coat sort of thing. Like, I feel in that sense, be I think a lot of people use him for like yeah. you know, conversions. I mean, he does have the two arms over there. But even that, like, it'll be easy to snip off. Yeah, so, or it'd be good to uh, convert like a mutant or something. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. For our our venture into the Pilgrim project, I thought it would be neat to make like a four armed or extra armed mutant, but realized there wasn't really an easy way to do that. We could name him Goro. Oh, Goro from Mortal Kombat! That would be awesome. Goro, Goro would probably have an overly long body, just like this model. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> That's true. So Every body is a little scorpion. Long. Model too. Get over here. Would well, be great. Yeah, but I think in general, a lot of these models, I think, will be one good thing that I think would be really neat. Like the, all the all the, most of the guys, like the cultists, have like this like environmental suit that they're wearing, sort of. And yeah, I could yeah. see like putting like making a little plastic visor to put over the thing. I mean, like you well, could look exactly that, like, like a Starcraft. Color marine or an ancient astronaut that would be cool you know know. i guess maybe to speak to the point of kind of the weed like mining armor sort of thing 
one of the models is actually supposed to have some mining laser lance or something, which I don't know what looks kind of, is pretty interesting, but it is gigantic. Maybe that's an indication that it was actually something that's normally mounted on like a little sentinel thing or a track thing and that it isn't normally carried. Yeah, for our sanity, we're going to have to try to pretend that's the case. Because, like, even as it is, if it was normally to be carried, <laughs> he has, like, three handles on it or something. And, like, that's I good for... Arm to help you. Yeah. Like, I mean, the mining colony would be pretty worried when the Inquisition came to look for, like, corruption and found, like, oh, these laser lances, what are these extra handles for? Be a big key off to the, the corruption. <laughs> And, and he, beyond that, he has this cool, like, Jordy LaForge uh, <laughs> visor thing that he has pushed up. So I guess he can see, but... Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't need it. Yeah. No. It's kind of a shame. It looks like he has some sticks of dynamite on his back, which are a little... They're minor. I don't need that. It makes sense. I if guess. they were smaller, I feel you could say they were flares or something, which to me seems a little bit... No. Oh, so uh, I think it, it, we could mention this here, like the little guy with that mining laser and a bunch of the other like cultist models. They actually have thigh holsters, which I think is nice for like sidearms. But what looks a little awkward, I feel, you can see the grip coming out of the holster and like it just it's huge. And like I it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's probably not a pistol in there. It's a phablet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some sort of tablet or something. The Galaxy Note 40,000. Awesome. Yeah, Microsoft's there. still around. It probably changed. Microsoft the name isn't. Microsoft's gone. Has to be gone. Samsung, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. so you'd we have talked to talk about this dude. The handle off that, and you could replace it with a more realistic one. But I like the fact that they actually have sidearms. Yeah, so then, like, they have a whole bunch that are including in it of, I guess, they're just referring to, like, the first and second generation guys. And they're kind of like the guy with the laser lance in which they have more of this sort of hybrid gene stealer arms. And uh, they have a 360 view on Games Workshop's website to the sort of little leader guy. And he has some robed legs and stuff. And I think he looks great. He um, has a pretty wicked looking large knife dagger thing that has a um, little ring for his, yeah, for his finger. He's not dropping this combat blade. No. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, I think looks nice. He has kind of a cool hunched pose, sort of suggesting those weird mutations that are racking him. But perhaps the most exciting thing is that he has an auto pistol that is actually kind of small, like not. I feel yeah, it's so, at least for the size of these guys, they're a little larger than a normal model, and the size of that pistol actually fits pretty well with the model. At least in a forty k sort of sense, like it's not like a plasma pistol, which is like the size of the model's torso. Yeah, but yeah, so the first generation guys, I think, are excellent. A lot of all the other ones I don't think have the robes, but even still, I think they look good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're nice. I feel that probably the models that will be used the most for conversions of like stormtroopers and inquisitorial henchmen are like Earth the fourth man. generation guys. In particular, the one kind of looks like Chronicles or Riddick sort of guy with his goggles. I think he's great. Yeah, he looks awesome. He has this cool like striding forward pose um and he's holding his weapon in like a a fashion that kind of would actually make sense i mean admittedly him and all the others they don't have stocks on their auto rifles which is kind of a letdown like it would be almost impossible to shoot such a rifle accurately without it but this particular striding forward one is holding it in a way that you could easily add the stock if you wanted to. Whereas, unfortunately, a lot of the other ones, it would be a lot harder. 
Yeah, how like, their how their arms are positioned, you just couldn't get it in there. Fortunately, um, looking at there were some pictures of the actual model sprues, and the guns are all separate pieces, such that I feel it would be fairly easy to put something different on there. Yeah, so you could um, you could work with that, which is put is folding. Nice. You could put folding stocks on the rifles too. That's true. I kind of like the, the the auto guns look a lot like the old sort of Necromunda sort of auto guns, but they're far too big. I mean, the magazine they look in like the gun magazine. looks like a Bolter magazine, so, like, it would be a gigantic round. Um, Double stack it, magazines. I guess, but there, I guess the ejection port for the gun is... Same, it's like the same thing as the charging handle, like some shotguns and stuff. I guess perhaps that's it. But for the size of the round in those magazines, I don't think I would, the casing could come out of there. But well, maybe they're caseless. Maybe they're caseless ammo or something. Yeah, this is and like thing. yeah, or like the whole that whole magazine is just filled with like a polymer gunpowder thing with the bullets in there. And, that old H and K G eleven. Yeah, yeah, like that. Well, um, it's well, I guess one more thing to say about the guns, and I think this is even true for some of the Space Marine bolters as well. Down near the magazines, it looks like there's like a little, um, a little square piece, a little rib square piece that I imagine that's what you pull back to release the magazine on the weapon. So that's, yeah, that's a nice touch that they actually thought to add that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. But yeah, I think end of the day, I think these particular these third, fourth generation guys will be used in tons of like conversions for other yeah. cultist members, not just gene sealer cultists or mercenary stuff for Inquisitor 28 and such, almost to the point that it can probably start replacing the old Dark Vengeance cultist models that everyone used, despite their many shortcomings. Gigantic feet. Yeah, these guys, their feet aren't nearly as large. I think they're still look pretty big, but they're a lot better. Yeah, they're, they're, I think they are proportioned a little bit better. And, and even if they don't replace the cultists, like it, it's at least a new, an additional Another set option. of models that you can work with. And I'm sure we'll try to do something with some of them as well, like because they're they're just nice looking models. Well, so on to what I think are arguably the worst models from the Gene Stealer cultists. Um, there's some tiny little familiar guys that maybe they're allies with uh magician guy i'm not sure but there's some little teeny guys one's clutching a skull another one is holding a space marine helmet which is i they don't look too good no i, th I think they're the weakest model yes. in the kit i'm surprised they even made them yeah, oh, I, I guess i can deal with them not being good because like all the other stuff is pretty fantastic. Well, uh, talking about not as great. So, models, I um, feel the ab human, like the bigger ogre-ish one models with their like mining axes and hammers aren't necessarily the coolest. Oh, thing. Look at those muscles. They look so strong. <laughs> I yeah, I don't like them that much. It's interesting. They have like shackles and stuff on them. To like yeah. almost imply that even the the cult here has to like keep them chained and stuff. Yeah, it's not really no effect. It's like the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I I don't know what the the story behind these are, and if maybe they were also an old Gene Sealer cult stuff. I guess we'll find out sometime. Maybe. It is cool though that he's clutching that skull, huge yeah. skull. That's dumb. They should, they Superhumans, should. only yeah. superhuman space marines that have skulls that big. Yeah, wow. Well, but putting past that. putting past that stuff, I think the rest of the Gene Steeler cultist models are all great and much better than I expected for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, you yeah. have a lot to work with. So I guess we talked a bunch about the uh, Gene Steeler cult stuff. I guess we should mention some about the Space Marines. So they're they're Death Watch Space Marines. Like I, the the background for them, like. Are they there for specifically hunting down like Xenos and stuff? 
Yeah, I think in the yeah. order of the universe, it's sort of their uh, militant arm that they. I'm not exactly sure the process, but somehow they will recruit space marines from the various chapters that will go and work for the order of Xenos for a time. So because of that, all of these particular models, which there are actually 11 of them, they're all from different chapters. And it's like the dirty dozen of the space marines, all sorts of interesting characters coming together to kill Gene Steelers. I don't know, but we'll have to consider that as we talk about these cool models. It's probably the Dark Angel with that robe. <laughs> well, I guess we're just let's we're gonna have to decide which are the coolest ones, and the coolest one will become Lee Marvin. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to just go through each one of them? Briefly? I think so. There's enough to talk about them. So I think one of the things that's sort of been around in the background was that each one of these Marines, like they could use whatever sort of armament and weapons that they feel the most comfortable and proficient with, and. I guess they took that to sort of a, a next level for these. <laughs> yeah, they in, in that they if they want Terminator armor, they have Terminator armor. If they want Space Marine bike, they have a bike. So like, rather than all just power armor. Oh Marines, God! Wouldn't it have been awesome if one of them had like one of those cool Centurion suits? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy! Wow. Yeah. So conversion cool. opportunity for anyone listening yeah. to this. So yeah. speaking to that, like, yeah, they actually have a White Scars guy with a Space Marine bike, which the bike looks pretty nice, although admittedly it's still the old kind of classic bike design that has basically no clearance, which is a little... Yeah. Eh. If yeah, it was driving cool. on anything but, like, a paved road, it would probably get stuck. But even still, I think that the bike design, I mean, they look cool, but, like... A little weird. Yeah. But the... uh the actual white scar guy looks really nice. Like he has that long sort of mustache that people sort of associate with the white scars. He has a pretty, a pretty cool power sword that actually has a scabbard that looks like it would fit it. Um, Probably the best part is his, his bird friend. <laughs> you know, I like him. And he, he has... I'm pretty sure I he can't does. tell. He probably does. It looks like it. And he, the, the bird even has his own cool sword cane that he's holding his his one wing <laughs> sword cane. That sword cane. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Yeah, I guess they were trying to think of a clever way to make it look like he was flying. So they decided that antenna on the bike was. It's not an antenna. It's a sword cane. He's carrying, he's carrying that. The one thing he it's sorta of weird that he has like a uh the head of some gene stealer cult member, but it's pretty small. It almost looks like he cut off the head of a, one of the familiars. One of the familiars, yeah. Well, that's so, the trophy kill he has. Well remember that uh the familiar <laughs> holding that space marine helmet? I bet it was his helmet. And so he made he it his personal it. quest to get it back and so maybe well, sure. He killed it, yep. I mean, it looks like his, his helmet even has, like, a gash on the top of it, so I think that's it, actually. It could be. Glad he got it back. It was, he probably, he's not wearing it, probably, because it's top knot. Too tough. That would be a cool conversion to do uh, with the model to, like, cut out a hole in the top of the helmet such that the <laughs> top knot could slide through. Makes sense. Yeah, well, we, we talked we have, about that. We have lots of models to cover, so. Chaplin. Ultramarine Chaplin. This is Cassius? Is that the guy's name? Yeah, yeah I think it's a younger version of him before he gets his face, like, melted off. And, and he looks a whole heck of a lot better than the, yeah, you know, that, the old the, Cassius. The workshop model, the old one of Cassius, is one of, if not, it's the worst, the worst space marine model space marine characters. Yeah, but this one's nice. Like he has cool like his armor is sort of that Mark IV armor with the like extended uh armor plate to kind of cover some of the cabling and stuff around his waist. Um which looks cool. He has a pretty neat book on on the side of him with like the little cloth bookmark thing. He's Crozius. 
is actually kind of small. At least it's still big, but the haft isn't outrageously long. Admittedly, the haft is a little bit too thick, such that uh, Cassius would have a hard time getting a I good grip around it. it. Yeah. yeah. Or may- maybe where he's holding it is actually smaller. It's the special grip, <laughs> grippy, gripping part of the haft. Yeah, but overall, he look. I think he just looks nice. He has a lot of kind of stuff, detail stuff going on, but it doesn't look too cluttered. Um, yeah, he has a little cloth bookmark in the book he's carrying. Yeah, like it's cool. He does have kind of a some sight thing on his bolter that I, I'm never too crazy about, but at least it's more integrated with the the pistol and not like just paste it on top and admittedly with how he's aiming it it actually kind of looks like it's eye level that's so it's not terrible because sometimes the stupid scopes they'll put on bolters like are way above the bolster and it, it it's yeah, not so yeah i mean it's not really clear what that's supposed to be if it is a scope or just some it might be some like targeting system to like he could use that to help call in like airstrikes or so. I, I don't know. It's not know. clear. So we talked about Cassius. He's he's pretty good. Librarian. Yeah. There's a librarian and he's a blood raven. That's like Dawn of War was finally in model form, right? <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. cool. I like him. I think it's a surprisingly good entry. He has like he's sort of striding forward a little bit and he has a pretty neat screaming, like manifesting psychic rage type thing that just works well with this slow sort of leaning forward pose. Like it just, and even though it fits with the always yelling space Marine head, I think it's, it's good on him. He has By, the, his legs are pretty thick and bulky. Like that I think is particularly good. And, he has some scrolls on his back, probably like scrolls of town portal to once <laughs> his death watch brethren get deep into the gene stealer Mine. mines, like and they need to resupply. They yeah. can use the scroll of town portal and he can make sure all the other ones get in there first and he'll go, go back to Deckard Kane and uh well, the it's other scroll is probably a scroll of identity. Stay yeah. a while and listen. That's yeah. <laughs> he has some keys too. Yeah, they look nice. Um, I don't. There's this like sort of wing thing on his backpack that I think's a little. Wait, well, much. actually, so that's oh, kind of cool. Like with the scrolls that of Town Portal, it's like a Diablo reference. It's a time where GW is actually referencing Blizzard <laughs> games rather than Blizzard. Uh, referencing everything gw did pretty cool his well, he, uh his four sword looks nice it looks like all the old four swords the blade anyway i like that it's a fairly symmetrical blade but i think that the pommel there with the little raven head that's like the only part that's not symmetrical and i think that's a little awkward yeah you'd have to change that. well so about interesting war gear there are actually two of them that have jump packs and one of them i feel is a fair bit nicer than the other and let's start with the nice one which is the or at least in my opinion strike it's it's strike they made a plastic form of strike yeah and like he has a nice sort of dynamic pose and i think more than anything his armor is very sleek and clean which just looks good like he has some interesting the straps to hold on his backpack are like sort of fastened to like the corners of the breastplate such that they like fit better onto him and doesn't just seem all this extra bulk to him which looks nice and he's a beaky a beaky it's true and it's, it's trying to kind of make look like a raven skull with the little drilled in holes and, and he it. has those cool cleats on his on his boots like he's <laughs> Getting in onto a soccer or a football field to play some football World Cup style. It's pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Even as that skull there, he's trying to kick. Oh, yeah, that's, that's probably it. He's going in for it. And he has some cool little feathers that like actually look like feathers. So I feel that some of the ones on some of the newer Dark Angels look kind of rigid and 
not that nice, but these look, they look good. So I, yeah, I think he's pretty great. But I mentioned there's another one, which is the Blood Angel guy. And I'm not, I feel he's pretty same ish. Yeah, and like all the stuff that I liked about the Raven Guard, like the big, the straps aren't gigantic, like they are on the Blood Angel guy. He has these sort of gaudy wings on his shins. But wait, look at his beautiful face, that flowing, those flowing locks of golden blonde hair. Oh, I sort of like his face. I think it looks pretty good. It's a different look, a looking face. And it has hair, admittedly. That's not something I, I guess we should be thankful that he doesn't have big vampire teeth like GW oh, yeah. has been prone to do as of late. Yeah. He's, uh, I mean, he has a hand flamer, which is like all the reasons. sure games. that's a hand flamer? Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's huge. And it's like also his chainsaw, like it has that gigantic blood drop as like a Yeah, the the little basket oh. hilt on it. Yes. Like why is the that blood drop so big? Like and where did they get the gem that big? Like how did they get that? Yes, yeah, so I when just there are like rope tied around the back of his jump pack. That's not particularly cool. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's just not a lot terrible. of detail that they just didn't, not. almost like they didn't know what they wanted to do with it. It's like, I don't know, let's put some purity seals and some blood drops and stuff. Like, whatever, call it done. Uh, we talked enough about this mediocre model. Um, I guess there's still some more interesting... Terminator! Ones. Salamanders, like, and he looks I think, right. um, this, if we look at this model here, I think this is where the name of the game originated. Um, Overkill! Yeah, take a look at this. He has this heavy flamethrower. And then in addition to that, that's not enough. He also has uh, like a power, an uh, underslung melt-a-gun on his power fist. Now that, this is that's overkill. Dreadnought. Yeah, he yeah. is like a dreadnought. I mean, I Smite guess... war. That's what it says on his power fist. Smite what? war. He's going into kick ass. He and, takes and no names. He I mean, kills I, gene stealers. I mean, like, I guess it's good he has these extra fuel tanks on his back, but I don't know. I don't love that aspect because he already has a pretty large tank of Prometheum on the flamer, and then the flamer, it's just so big and bulky. Uh, he has that cool brassiere, the flaming brassiere. That's cool. It's it, like an Olympic torch, like... <laughs> He's running to light the flame. Yeah. I mean, I guess, like, he's fine, but I feel of all the models, he seems the most just like we took a plastic Terminator and piled some extra stuff on him because we weren't sure what to do. Yeah, I mean, his arms are, like, no different from the normal classic plastic Space (laughs) Marines. I mean, mean, those Space Marine Terminator models are excellent, but... Yeah. Well, that's Terminator. He's he's fine. Um, I guess... The rest, I think, are all pretty normal Marines, but one of them, the Imperial Fist guy, actually has a frag. Oh, cannon, boy. Which, I, I mean, I might be wrong, but I think the only other place that that is in is the Blood Angels Codex, and I sort of almost thought it was only on Dreadnought, so it's interesting that they... Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like he can carry it here. I see why it'd be on Dreadnought. It has little anti-gravity servos to help him. The Terminator like, should have the size that. of that barrel. Like, oh my lord. Yeah, it's pretty. Well, large. it's probably that big such that his servo skull friend can hide in there in the evening. That's where he sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. He I think in there. the servo skull is to help him reload the frag cannon because otherwise he couldn't reach those big hoppers in the back. So he uses this little articulated spine probably to string him out and help him. Yeah, that's his, his ammo buddy. Someone yeah. has to do it. What a good little friend. He's, I, I like his... In general, I like his armor. His his uh, feet have sort of the extra heavier Devastator look that they yeah. brought back. Um, and his, even his helmet has a very interesting sort of knight-like look that is cool. It's different. Um, see, he's fun. I guess it's, it's cool that he has a bolt pistol on his back. Um, it would be hard for him to reach that. So and unlatch it, but yeah, that's true. That's what skull buddy. his skull buddy's for. 
character-wise there. I mean, he could probably, uh, the Skull Buddy could probably shoot the bolt pistol with his uh, movable <laughs> spine. Oh, he actually has a little, like, roll of parchment that maybe he prints it out with his... I think he does. So he's just taking, taking note, like, uh, killed a couple more Jings to their cultists. Probably uh, the most helpful. All in a day's work. The most, he's probably the most helpful part of it. Of everything, Adam. Seems. Do you think you could make like a cool drama of Skull Buddy shooting a bolt pistol? Mm, that would be great. Probably. Maybe not with this skull. But yeah, I think. Wow, well, we do. we talked enough about him. Who's next? Probably the the Space Wolf guy <laughs> with the awesome mohawk. It's like one of those new dwarf fire slayers in Space Wolf form. I think honestly, he's like my favorite of the models. Like, I, I mean, I'm not too thrilled with that the chainsaw, but like other than that, like he has he has a very dynamic running pose, but it's not overdone, and his armor is pretty smooth and not overwrought too. Like he has that scabbard for his his knife, and it like looks like the knife could fit in there. Like he's. He's a nice cool. dynamic pose that, like, I think people will use that for a lot. And he has his bolter. He has a bolter, and it's actually in, like, a scabbard that looks cool. And better yet, like, the scabbard is actually, like, it has, like, a belt. A so leather strap around strap his shoulder. Is going around his shoulder, like, so it's not just somehow attached there. Like, I think that's cool. Wait, if he's the coolest smile, he... He doesn't look like Lee Marvin. That almost couldn't be Lee Marvin. Yeah, you're he's right. cool though. He has a little extra magazine for his bolt, or actually, the it's not as extra because he doesn't have one in the gun currently. Yeah. But there's an extra, there's a magazine on his belt. I feel yeah. I could do without the like runes flying like on his like knee and stuff. But maybe they're the Urgle runes, the Fire Slayer's Urgle runes. <laughs> Probably. Wow. Um. Yeah, I like him. I guess there's Iron this hands. Iron Hands guy that he has, I guess he has a magazine that he's loading into his bolt gun. They're like Pez dispenser like right there. He looks like a big Pez dispenser. And why does he have that cable going from the like the pistol grip of his bolter to like nothing? Well, yeah, that's that for the melted gun. But it's only one shot, doesn't need that. Oh, actually, interestingly, the the little toggle that we mentioned to like release the magazine, you can see since his magazine is out, it's the opposite direction. So yeah, holy shit! So that is that is that, what that is it what was meant to be. That's cool. I guess a detail on him that's particularly stupid. Like he has a large, large. Maybe it's a bolt around hanging from his... That's, his I'm belt. pretty sure in the Space Marine Codex and stuff, that's a marksman badge. That's and you see that on a badge is a dildo. <laughs> I yeah, guess, it doesn't look good. I guess the Space Marines are all males. It, uh, yeah, it looks terrible. Like yeah, you could have good. to remove that. But not he good. has a great a great head, though. I think that's yeah, the I best love his, part. His, his face is wonderful. His backpack's really neat, too. And I guess we've sort of touched on this a bunch already, but, like, all of these Marines actually have a lot of equipment and gear, like, on their sides and stuff, which is nice. Like, I feel with a lot of the Plastic Space Marine kits, while they give you a bunch of grenades and pouches and stuff that you can glue on yourself, to really integrate them well and have them fitting close to the Space Marine body... You have to do some serious cutting and working to get it to look natural. And so I like, hear yeah, they've done all that work for you. On his backpack, which is admittedly is pretty cool, there's a skull on the back, but the skull like a brass. It's a bionic eye. That's <laughs> a bionic eye. It's yeah, that's 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 like true that. with the skull on his yeah. uh, breastplate too. Oh really? Oh yes, it is. He might. I think he might be my favorite, despite. There are a number of things that I don't like. I like don't like how he's... upper legs he has, like, his I think are a little are. bit thin. Well, that's because there's a bionic leg inside. He's inside the armor? Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, I like that. 
Well, I think so this is a theme power. for all of these space marine models. There are lots of good parts that like you could use for making neat marines, but maybe you wouldn't want all of them. Like you'd want to yeah. cut off the dildo and um, yeah, you don't want that. But well, I think there are maybe two or two talk, more. You're talking about left. stuff to remove. Like there's a more just standard ultramarine guy that's just two handed a bolter, like. He has some big ultramarine U on his backpack. It's just no reason to have that. Get rid of that. If you get rid of that, the marksman icon, yeah. If you'd remove all that stuff, he, you know he's nice. I think his legs are again a little thin on him. I don't feel all of the marines in this kit suffer from that, but I think. I mean, what's the just, deal with like the classic space brain legs? That's uh, all they are. What's the deal with the iron brace thing around one of the tops of his legs? Just detail, extra detail. I'm surprised detail. you can get all that detail in plastic. That would have been the sort of detail <laughs> that you would have needed fine cast to get. <laughs> Thank you for oh, not having me on the cast. Well, I think there's one more Marine left, and he's a pretty good one. The Dark Angels. This is going to be the new Cypher conversion guy. It's Lee Marvin. That's Lee Marvin. Hey, Lee. I mean, he, his sword's pretty stupid, and the plasma pistol has something on the top that looks a little bit like a shrine. Side. It's, no, laser it's a shrine. Side. It's. I think it's a laser side because those little orbs shrine. on the front are red. If you interesting Shrine. enough, if you cut it off, it does kind of have like you know, some of the older variants of lat or plasma pistols, like some of the chaos one. It has that kind oh, of man. armored cowling over it, which I kind of like. Yeah, oh, I think the plasma pistol looks pretty good for a, a gigantic plasma yeah. pistol. Um, He's, he has a little the leather belt that's like tucked in. Yeah, yeah I like nice. that. He and he has his little Deathwing dagger because he's from the Deathwing. Like that's. He doesn't have the marksman badge, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like him. His his, his robe face, like yeah, I like him. I mean, I would Lee Marvin. I don't, I don't really like Lee the Marvin. shrine on his back, but you could just use one of the other backpacks, and he's good. Well, so I think we we've, we've talked about all all the models. Like this game has a lot of good models. I mean, I think it's one hundred and sixty five dollars, which is a lot, pretty it's expensive. So money, I mean. Compared, though, to what GW kits cost, like, just 10 normal Space Marines, I mean, is that $55 now? I think, they might only I think it's, like, 40-something. So that's not the worst that's... thing. But, like, just talking about their clamshell normal Space Marine characters are, like, $30 a piece. So, God forbid they start releasing. Because, yeah, maybe in six months they'll release each guy individually, like, yeah. the Assassin oh. game. And I can guarantee each one will at least be thirty dollars. Maybe the chat yeah, yeah. will be thirty five. So if you want to preempt that, you can probably on uh websites once shortly after this game's you released, they'll probably can. sell all the models separately and <laughs> yeah, so get them now. Really get them now. Because <laughs> yeah. wow, this game this is a game, like a new game. I I can't imagine too many people are buying it for the game. I mean I imagine it will be fun to some extent, but people want it for the models. Like the components for the game are going to be nice. Like there, there are a whole bunch of little tiles um, with like corridors and stuff. And like I feel you could probably use this in like uh, Warhammer 30k, like a Zone Mortalis type thing, yeah. rather than buying the really dollars of. Four Wait, dollars. we could also use them for playing cool games of Frostgrave, which <laughs> maybe can be a segue into what Eric and I did last weekend. We actually played two games of Frostgrave. Yeah, so rather than just talk about the rules, we um, yeah played some games. We went in there like, and did it, guys. We I can't believe before it. Before we played, we went to a game store and looked at some of the official Frostgrave models bought the least egregious scalps we could find came home trimmed them a little bit it was probably the first model that i trimmed or assembled in like i don't know 10 years because <laughs> it's largely adam and eric that do that but i did it and then we got them in some games uh, yes yeah, so i used a bunch of their, their models but then also a lot of just malifo stuff we have because honestly 
Malif like just getting the Malifo crew works pretty well for Frostgrave because the master has an apprentice, which just is ends up being your wizard and the apprentice. And then you have some other guys that could be generic thugs or thieves or whatever. The guy was is his name Nick McMor no, it wasn't Nick Morton. Necrodermis or I, I don't remember the Malifo guys yeah. too well, but I was using one of the necromancer guys as a necromancer. And, um, admittedly, we didn't really have any good terrain or anything, so we were just using like soda cans and stuff, which I think probably hurt the experience a little bit because I think due to like the power bone of darts. shooting and such, yeah, bone darts. We'll get to that in a second. Like if you're in, the best thing to be is just out of sight because a lot of the spells are pretty powerful and that if someone's shooting at you and they get a good roll, like a 20 or something, like you're, the, your the mom's are screwed. Yeah. They're just going to die regardless I mean, of, of what the, they are. Of the two games, like I got rocked both times. I had a, a witch. My witch's name was Moogle. <laughs> Moogle, he got rocked. Like probably both times he was killed by a vicious bone dart. And then my, my apprentice, Bear Bradley, she didn't do very well. My androgynous looking apprentice, like maybe, I guess I cast some spells and did some damage, but like largely it came down to Eric getting some good rolls, resulting in some pretty severe damage that none yeah. of the models have a lot of life, so they just die. Well, I guess it's it just kind of the way, since the way the system works, like, after you do the kind of opposed roll off, like if you roll a twenty, that just that'll blow through the armor, and like there's nothing you can do. You guys are just gonna die. So, regardless of who it is, if they roll pretty high, regardless of what the defender rolls, provided they don't win, a lot of damage is gonna be caused. Which is, <laughs> I think, why also a lot of people I think would have a tendency to want to just make elementalist because they have like some of these great like spells that are like plus eight to your shooting like attack elemental bolt and such and adding eight to whatever you roll like is pretty like it's it's a lot compared to like particularly because when you're shooting and such like that you add your plus eight for elemental bolt to your d20 roll and the defender they just add their fight value which tends to be like two two, two or at, four Something. It, and four is really high. That's for uh, like a, a Knights Templar or something. Most of them are like yeah, zero so to So like if an elemental bolt is shot at you and the attacker gets like a 20 and adds eight to it and I'm defending and it's like, oh, if I roll a 22, it's like, oh, I rolled well, but I can't beat that 28. And then it then, doesn't matter that I rolled well as well. Yeah, so then it's just... 28 minus the person's armor, which is at best like 10 or 12. So like you're just dead. <laughs> There's an optional rule for like critical damage if you roll and that like a natural 20 and it deal like... double the damage. <laughs> so like, oh my god. So I, I think that sort of behooves the players to play with terrain, like such as the is a ruined city and. I think also if you're doing a campaign or using some of their scenarios rather than just the sort of free for all, it would make more of a reason to not just try to kill each other. Which well, it, so that's that's why I was talking about those tiles and Death Watch would be great. Right. <laughs> yeah, that actually probably wouldn't be too bad. Another reason to get Death Watch overkill. I mean, probably the best part about it is the gene stealers. I mean, we don't really want those space brains. Yeah, and they they could probably be some cool cards, but. Yeah, not too thrilled about them. But yeah, so like, I mean, because actually getting back to like even in the free-for-all games of Frostgrave where you, like the victory conditions are either kill everyone or just get treasure off the board, which, so you could focus on the treasure thing, but when you pick up treasure to, to claim them, you actually have to have your model run it off the board. And I think when you pick it up, your movement is halved or something such that, it's not particularly fun to have like half of your guys, all they're doing is running up, picking up stuff and running off and leaving the game. <laughs> and like, if someone else decides like, well, fuck the, fuck the, the um, treasure, I'm just attacking you. So like you have two guys 
half your warband just tried to get off the board rather than like actually interacting or attacking. I could see things going pretty poorly, <laughs> which yeah, I guess that gets back to why playing the actual campaign scenario stuff that actually has like um, NPC characters and go- golems and stuff like that, I think might be more interesting. So I think ultimately we need to play some more games. Yeah, it's, we'll, we'll play more games. Not We'll have some more posts, I think, about it on the website. But um, Yeah, I would like to have a post, I think, kind of comparing some of the Frostgrave miniatures to some like 40K stuff. Malifaux stuff, just to yeah, see what they're like. So, more on that in the future. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I guess the last thing that I think is worth mentioning, um, because of a blog we follow called Screwed Up Dice, they've got us started to look into another miniature game called Wrath of Kings, which is put out by Cool Mini or not. And we, you know, I had seen the Kickstarter about it and such, but wasn't... Yeah, obviously it was a Kickstarter, because I feel <laughs> that's the way that probably yeah. half of board games and miniature games get funded now. Yeah, but, but I wasn't particularly interested in it. But I saw Screwed Up Dice. They're actually running an interesting, like, uh, cooperative, like, worldwide campaign series sort of thing, which is sort of mimicking um, an old games workshop series of articles and White Dwarf called The Tale of Four Gamers, which had four people just start Warhammer armies and over the course of a few months progressively build up their armies, paint them, and play battles and such. And uh, Screwed Up Dice is doing a similar thing, just inviting anyone around the world to just try to start a Wrath of Kings army. Like you can download all the rules for Wrath of Kings for free on the website and just as a way to encourage people to try the game out and sort of together like promote everyone like yeah let's build this stuff let's paint these models and actually try to like in this year actually build an army it's over it's a six month i believe time period with us he has a bunch of plan like a timeline laid out to kind of keep people on track and wow we would love to have done that with the pilgrim project that adam's working a lot on i don't think we'd have time to do that but we, even if i wasn't working on that i, I wouldn't be able to keep up with the pace that yeah. they want you to. but oh boy. it still seemed like a good opportunity like you know what like the blog our blog we like looking at different model companies seeing the quality of their plastic what they're doing so it encouraged us to go and get a few models i actually did a unboxing video of some hadros like kraken sort of model um, and am almost finished assembling it now should have a post in a day or two looking at kind of talking about the assembly process and what I think um, I guess just a little preview of that per se the models aren't really made of like a polystyrene like plastic like games workshop plastic oh boy it, yeah it's more of a, like a PVC plastic so in working with it it's, it's very similar to Mantic Games old Restic. It's not as hard to work with as that, but it's still it's it's harder to work with. And a lot of it's probably due just I'm not familiar with the material, so the same techniques just don't work as well. But because of it, it it has take taken me a lot longer than I anticipated to assemble it. And well, I'll talk more about that in the post, so look out for that. But just if you do go into it, bear that in mind. It's it's a different beast than yeah. workshop stuff. But I, yeah, I would encourage everyone, if you're remotely interested in it, to just go to Screwed Up Dice's website. He has a whole ton of posts about talking about the different factions and the game and such. And yeah, it's it's worth looking at. And his site's have- great, regardless. Like he's started to look at a number of different games outside of the customary Warhammer stuff that we're, we're most used to. So, I mean, it, it's a great side. Adam, didn't you actually get one of them? Yeah, no, I'm doing a, at least on the side, doing a little work with um, the game. Mainly, after looking around on eBay, I found um, one of their character models, 
during the Kickstarter for some of the models, you could get like resin preview versions of the models. And I found one on eBay and purchased it. And um, it's this kind of interesting looking, um, uh, I think they're, this model's from the army Nasir. And she's some like blind swordsman who has this little like chained pirate dude. Um, and so I'm working on converting that yeah, model. She was beautiful maiden, but I guess the blind the car, the blind a car, her name is where that's like her, that's what she's referred to as. Yeah, she's, she's and I don't know it, the pro I'm doing pretty well with, um, assembling the model and converting it, but I, it needs to be said like, Part of the reason why I wanted to try and get the resin version was because I thought it would be a little easier to work with than some of the weird plastic that are used in their models. And oh boy, the resin cast I got isn't, it was pretty bad, to put it lightly. Um, Incredibly prominent mold lines that need to be cut off. I mean, thankfully, it being resin, most of them are pretty easy to remove, but lots of air bubbles. There are a couple places on the bottom of the model that, like, didn't act, they weren't even fully filled in, so they didn't add enough resin to the kit for the mold. Um, lots of air bubbles. And even on top of that, what's almost I found the most surprising. The model is covered in like a thick mold releasing agent. And even after scrubbing the model's components four times with soapy water and even letting them soak overnight in the soapy water, I still haven't been able to remove all of it. Wow. Um, And I mean, I'll admit I've had some Forge World models where I've had to scrub them a lot to get rid of some of that mold release, but this I feel is taking the cake for difficulty in removing. Mm. Um, so, but regardless, I'll soldier through it. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel that's about maybe wrapping it up for this evening. We'll certainly have some posts and talk more about the Wrath of Kings and Frost Grave and, um, I would encourage you to just continue to look at the blog between the Bolter and me, if you're not, or if you already are, just yet yeah, continue. We have a bunch of posts kind of talking more about what we're doing on the Pilgrim Project and such. Um, so, yeah, like, we appreciate yeah listening. Hopefully some of you are still here, despite all the talk about Space Marines, Marines and whatnot. Space Marines! But, um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Um, does anyone have any last words before we sign out? No, I think we covered most of the things. Most I just, of the I just say I thanks to anyone who's still listening. Hope maybe it's just friends at this point, but anyway, yeah. it's been fun. <laughs> yeah, thanks everybody. Signing off.